Lee and Lee is probably most known for the incredibly popular, and in my personal opinion, overused O11 dynamic case. And I was like, they need to come up with something different, something new, man, something bigger. Well, this arrived. I literally had to reinforce this desk before I put this case on it. There's literally like four more legs on this desk now because this sucker, this case, this is a case. It's heavier than most builds that I've built. Get amazing prices on the brands you love at Micro Center. Micro Center has over 30,000 items in stock, including desktops, laptops, computer components, monitors, TVs, and more. Not sure which parts to choose for your next build? Then use Micro Center's custom PC builder to find compatible parts, create your parts list, add them to your cart, and use same day pickup at one of Micro Center's 25 locations nationwide. And if you're not comfortable building it, one of Micro Center's professional builders can build it for you as fast as same day for a fee. And if you need ideas for a build, then head to Micro Center's Build Showcase for great build inspiration, or submit your build for others to see. To see everything that Micro Center has to offer, click the link in the description below. I don't know which way is up, honestly, and it's extremely reinforced. It came all the way from China, and I can tell you right now, this is the V3000 Plus. I love large PC cases because you can just fit so much in them. But when it comes to like water cooling and stuff, I love to just overbuild the cooling systems. Big radiators, at least 480 rad. My Case Labs SM8, uh, SMA8 held a 520 in the bottom, which was our 560 in the bottom, which was awesome. And it's been a long time since we found a, a case that will allow me to build anything like that. And that's why this one here supposedly will offer me everything I've been missing in the, so we heard you like big cases category. It is review day. I'd be literally concerned, like I would love to build in this. In fact, it's the kind of case that I would even consider like, wow, maybe I would build my personal rig in this. I'm always, when I review something, and this is gonna be more of an unboxing and first look rather than a quote unquote review. Case reviews realistically need to be built in because that's how you learn everything about the case. And so I like to look at it like, is this something I would put my own system in? And the answer is yes but I would legitimately need help getting it up the stairs. And you know what? I'm not a weak guy, but you know what's getting weaker? My back. The V3000 Plus, possibilities are endless, and so is the weight. Ugh. Nothing like a chonker case for a chonker guy, I tell you. Look, I'm six foot four, and this table is a standard sitting height. We've got a huge box of accessories. Mounting plate for something. This. Okay, so apparently you can do dual system. That I recognize as an ITX mounting plate for an ITX motherboard. A lot of spare screws, hard drive slash water pump mounting plates, more block off plates. I have to do like the, the tablecloth trick. Why is it so heavy? It's aluminum, right? Or aluminium. <laughs> it's like the exact same size. As the SM8. <laughs> okay, so looking at the outside here, I can tell you that the glass is hinged. I just can't tell you how to. I love these types of, types of cases where they'll give you a compartment for the water cooling because it keeps that heat away from everything else. So if I pop this guy off right here, and this is all brushed aluminum, which is really nice. Very nice construction, look at this. This is metal, this is real metal. You see the, the mesh material right there. Here is your mounting cage for either a 480 or a 560, which is four 140 millimeter fans, and any other variant below that. You would have to remove the drive cages right here though to be able to fit anything bigger than what appears to be about a three, 360 right here. So there's the other side of it right there. That's a support for your power supply that you can flip it around and there are other holes you can mount that on so that you have a little support for a long, long power supply. This right here is the rail system that you can see the cages right here are able to mount to, so you can move the cage system to where you want it. Like I said, me personally, I would just be filling this up with as much water cooling gear as I could. Anyway, IO, combo jack, reset button, power button I assume. This is fan speed, there's a fan controller, this is RGB mode and color, USB 3, USB 2, 
and two USB-C. Um, this one right here also says, oh no wait, yeah, there's two mic combo jacks. I guess that'd be because of the dual system capability. Anyway, here's the front panel. Jesus Christ, Phil. Ooh, dang, that's some quality. <laughs> you could fit also a 540 rad and potentially even a 560 on the front, right? One, two, three. Yeah, you could fit a 560 on the front. That is not something I've ever seen before. Oh wait, they're secured for shipping. There are screws in here you have to remove. There we go. So that comes off. Dang, the glass is heavy. Sorry, I'm just like totally fangirling over this case right now. How do we get the top off? Okay, that just pushes off. Again, ball nubbins. There's so many mounting options for things. You can center your radiator if you want. If your motherboard has high heat sinks or something in the way, then you can offset it this way. But the problem is because there's so many different mounting options, it's a lot of block off for the airflow up here. So I would keep that in mind. But if you go 560 rad in the front, a 560 rad in the side, and like a 480 on the top, you're gonna have so much water cooling. It's not gonna really matter, honestly. And this is the kind of case that, like I said, I would just absolutely throw every single bit of water cooling in there that I could dream of. Now let's talk about the back side of the case. We have like a solid like 25 millimeters of depth right here between the motherboard tray and the glass panel. So plenty of room to run cables, grommets everywhere, cable hold downs, one, two, three, four SSD trays there. These are also SSD mounts. If you don't want those in there, you can remove them and as you can see, fan mounts. So you can now add even more fans to this thing on the motherboard wall. Even though you don't need them, you could do it because why the hell not? You see this track down the middle? It's also a place for you to mount like a big tube reservoir or something. You could mount another radiator right here, right here. So you could have a rad in the front, a rad in the bottom, a rad in the very back right here, a rad in the top, a rad here, a rad there. That's rad. <laughs> <laughs> Right here, as you can see, this is also on a slide, this particular piece of metal. This is where you can mount uh, your pump. So if you had like a, a, a standalone pump that wasn't a part of a combo or in a reservoir combo, you could mount it here and then you can slide this around. Right now it's set to have maximum compatibility with thick radiators because the fans are gonna go on this side. Fans in front of the bracket, rad radia radiator on the other side of the bracket, giving you Tons and tons of room. So this stuff is cool that it in includes a dual system. I don't like dual systems. I would not build one. <clears throat> I would not use those parts. That is a personal preference of mine. And the cool thing is you have the options too if you want. But you even have these rubber pass-throughs right here for the backside. And that's kind of neat because you could use that for multiple reasons. One, if you were to run an external water loop into this, for who knows what freaking reason you could. But because we have grommets here, See, there's a grommet right above the power supply hole. See my hand? Da -da -da -loop. You could fit four fingers in there. Uh, you could fit three in. Stuff. But this grommet right here, <laughs> sorry, you could use that to also pass through cables. A lot of options there. Some might go, well, why would you need that? Well, you know what? Why wouldn't you at least want the option to be able to do it? So that's kind of nice. I think it's interesting though that these, these pass through holes right here don't have any grommets, but right next to it do. I was getting ready to reuse my Inwin 925 case for my personal build and not the Spectre 3. I'm starting to think I want to build in this guy. Remember the Strix 4090? And it was like how massive it is. Does this give you an indicator of how big this case is? <laughs> it, it's funny because it looks at home. <laughs> but the problem is if I were to build in this and take this cooler off and water cool it, the PCB only goes to here. It goes to right there. So then it would look really kind of dumb because the graphics card, that much of it would be lopped off. Actually, the power, the water blocks do extend a little bit, so it'd be like right there. I mean, the 4090 being in there, yeah, that's a, that's a little bit of a scale reference for you, but here's a fill for scale. Oh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> you can fit this in the basement. <laughs> You can fit me in there. <laughs> so this is actually the vertical mount bracket here. And you can see you've got all these different mounting options there for how far away or how close to the motherboard you want it. So that would obviously mount down in here somewhere. Um, another 
water pump cheese plate. Right, this more than likely goes over here somewhere, theoretically. So there's that. But yeah, if this were my build, you can bet your ass I'd be pulling out all these drive cages from the bottom, this mounting piece for the drive cage, and I'd be putting a 560 right here. At least a 480 in the front, but probably a 560 if it would fit it just because. SL140 V2 fans all over this thing. Although the irony, if you've watched my video about those fans, I don't know when it went live, so maybe you saw it already, maybe you didn't. This case is so big, I'm not sure those cables are long enough to reach everywhere I would need them to reach, especially the basement. Because if I were gonna fit the basement fans and have them reach, the controller has to go low, which means the top fans probably wouldn't reach, and for sure the front fans probably wouldn't reach. So, like I said in that video, drawbacks to the cable links. I love this case, the build quality, the mesh, it's a fine mesh. So you're gonna have probably not the greatest of airflow. However, with the ability to just put, you know, 842 radiators in there, means that you would definitely have enough cooling with the radiators to get, you know, everything cooled off. And I mean, what's the most you're gonna water cool in here? A CPU, a graphics card, and maybe a second CPU and graphics card, but I, if you were going to, you have plenty of radiator space for it. Although you will sacrifice some stuff to put the second system in here. You'll sacrifice some mounting points for rads and pumps and whatnot. If I were to add that many radiators, it would probably be nice to have a second pump in the system just to overcome the amount of resistance that you could have with that many rads. As long as you don't have a ton of quick disconnects, it's typically not gonna be a problem. I mean, even a pass-through grommet right here for your, your, power, or your cable to your graphics card, and if you're doing a vertical mount with a 12 volt high power cable, like a native cable from a power supply, it could come up the backside and loop right into it and it won't even show. My only concern regarding airflow is the fact that these side panels are pretty restrictive in terms of like how much of it is solid. So if you imagine you have fans, cause you can't mount anything on this side of the bracket cause that's where the panel goes. You have fans on the inside of the bracket and then a radiator, you have all that resistance. And then as you can see, you're chopping off a solid like 30 plus percent of airflow potential by how thick the bracket is, they're not gonna be operating at their max efficiency, which, you know, it's kind of made up for with the fact that they are so, there's so many mounts. But I don't know if you noticed, I mean, I got entirely into this chassis toolless. So no tools necessary to get into it at all. This is one of those cases that a lot of people told me I should take a look at and I kind of, I was like, oh yeah, that's neat looking when, when Lee and Lee reached out to me. I just kind of high level looked at the marketing material that they had and I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't think I had, it had really hit me the grand scale <laughs> of literally everything you could do with this box. I would ask you guys, you guys want me to do a build in it? The answer is yes. Just I have so many builds I want to do and I don't like building cases just and, and systems just to tear them apart again. But man, do I feel like this might, oh man. See, I love my 925. And I've got some custom distro plates and stuff coming for that from Singularity. But I really, this, this takes me back to some of my roots. You guys, if you were here during the Skunk Works era, you know why I love this case already. Wait, how do you guys feel about this case? Would you use the dual system? So many people, especially if you're live streaming, you're like, ah, oh, dual system's awesome. It just adds a lot of cumbersome connections unnecessary in your stream, in my opinion, when it comes to audio capture, mic captures and all that. I get the redundancy being nice for streams not going down if something happens with your system, but you know, for the year and a half I've been live streaming on Twitch again, I've yet to have a system crash that has caused my stream to go down because I build my systems right. 